the Apostle Paul was humbly proud to let it be known that he was a prisoner of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bound to his Savior. The truth be told, Paul was also a prisoner of Rome. That great evangelist to the Gentiles is under house arrest. He has been put there by some bogus charges drummed up by a Jewish leadership that wanted to see him put away. Paul, after many journeys throughout the empire, building churches here and there, is now held with the responsibility of ministering to this young flock. And he does so by writing letters, epistles, wherein he says to the church to be strong, be united, give God the glory. As Paul is incarcerated, being under house arrest did give him the opportunity to be visited by other individuals. And one individual brought great joy to his heart because this young man had traveled from Philippi, a small town on the coast of Greece. He had journeyed a long way to bring him some money, finances that he could uh, take care of himself. It is estimated that that trip from Philippi could take six months to a year. Great sacrifice. Paul was overjoyed. He thought about his journey there to Philippi as he preached the gospel and brought into the fold a woman by the name of Lydia who in fact in her home would be where the church, early church would worship. From this grave distance they had cared about Paul and his needs and had come to share their love with him. The young man also brought news, news of the work there in Philippi. This was one of the military outposts of Rome. And so he brought news that there was some dissension in this young church. But more frighteningly, uh, there was a mood growing against those who had accepted Christianity. There was fear, there was anxiety, their hearts were heavy. Even in their wildest imagination, they could not know that in a very few years, Nero would feed Christians to the lions. Persecution at its worst. They felt those clouds growing and they felt the fear that comes with turmoil. Paul sends them a letter and at the end of the letter he says something very strange. He says, for them to rejoice, he said, I'll say it again, rejoice in God. Let men know you by your gentleness, by your graciousness, and be anxious for nothing. In all of your supplication, ask God for your needs and praise him and give him thanks. 
How do you have joy in your heart? How do you praise God when you're in deep trouble? When you are filled with fear, when you are filled with anxiety, when things about you are going in the wrong direction. And then he says that the peace of God, the peace that passeth all understanding, he will give it to you. And it will guard your mind, your intellect, what you think about. And guard your heart, your emotions. How often have we said, my heart is heavy. My head is, is filled with, with frustrating thoughts about things around me. Paul well knew what Jesus had taught his disciples. And he no doubt recalled as they gave him examples of Jesus' teaching. When Jesus was about to go to Calvary, he, he called his, his disciples together and he saw that they were in grave distress. They had tried on many occasions to kill him and as he explained to them the horrors that would befall him, even his explanation could not capture the awesome terribleness that he would face. They knew he was leaving them. Their hearts were heavy. He says, but let not your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. My peace, I'm going to give to you. Now, he says, my peace is different than the peace that the world gives. And here's the difference. The world gives you peace, by definition, because of the absence of war, because of the absence of turmoil. You are in a wonderful state of calm, of joy. Things are going well. The temperature is just right. The freeway has got less people on it. <laughs> Things are moving beautifully. You, you feel a sense of calm and joy in your heart because there is no conflict. My peace works exactly the same way except it works during conflict, during difficult times. When an hour and a half trip becomes three hours, when road rage is, as it were, in the hearts of men and women, I live in South Florida, the worst drivers in the universe. <laughs> and I have to be careful because I say, well, because they're old, but I'm old now and I don't know the reason, but they, they, they'll, turn, they'll turn left from the right lane and, and not, even, not even blink. Problems in the home. Problems for which you have no control. You're burdened. Oh, I know. We say when we see people, well, how are you today? Oh, I'm fine. But we all have a story. We all have something that is deep and heavy on our heart. Living is difficult. Oh, beloved, if ever there was a time that we need his peace, it is now. In case you haven't noticed, we live in a world that has gone crazy. Things people say and do are just seemingly unbelievable. You, you can't grab your mind around it. Problems everywhere. I had had one of those days at school where 
you begin to think about the joys of retirement. <laughs> a student had wondered if it was not possible to change a morning class that would be more convenient for them to attend. You want me to try that again? <laughs> <laughs> with absolute sincerity. And I came home, turned on uh, the television to hear the news, and was struck. They were talking about Redlands and San Bernardino. And the things that they said that were going on were just inconceivable to me. Terror had struck this sleepy village, this sleepy town, this place somewhere out in the desert. No community, no place is immune any longer from fear and anxiety. And whether it's your own problems or those things around you for which you have no control. You have to cry out, God, give me your peace. That peace that passeth all understanding. I know about that peace. I've experienced it. A few years ago, I was diagnosed with stomach cancer. And I had a magnificent surgeon, wonderful man, a great bedside manner, as it were, who came to talk with me. And he says, you know, it doesn't look good. I have to be very honest with you. He says, you know, I, I travel around the world doing this particular operation. And he says, unfortunately, when you start to feel pain, it's too late. As he spoke to me, I listened. He said, you, you seem very calm. Uh, I said, he said, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask the, our psychologist to come and talk with you. And so uh, the psychologist came and spoke with me. She said, you're in denial. I said, no, I'm experiencing God's peace. And I remember so clearly as I was in the operating uh, room going into operation they the nurse took my blood pressure it was normal and my heart rate was about 50 she thought I was in denial <laughs> my beautiful children and my sons came in to pray with me I understood and experienced that peace that passeth all understanding. I can't explain it to you. I can tell you it is real. Problems insurmountable. His peace can give you joy. So much joy that you in turn rejoice because you can only rejoice if there's joy in your heart. You can only rejoice if there's peace in your heart. And when you experience this peace, this peace that guards your mind, your intellect, the things that you hear, the things that you think about, this peace that guards your heart, your emotions, things that you feel 
you are able then to meditate on beautiful things. You meditate on things that are true. You meditate on things, things that are, are lovely. And while those around are frustrated, you have joy and peace. Oh, beloved, if ever there was a time, today, each of you here needs that peace. That peace that passeth all understanding. Paul understood that. For this was the same Paul who earlier was known as Saul of Tarsus, who the word says wrecked havoc of the church. And after his Damascus experience with God, he now would be the one persecuted. He wouldn't understand what it means to be thrown in jail, to be beaten, to be lied upon, to experience evil at its best. He also understood what it meant to be content in all things because God's Spirit through the power of the Holy Spirit resided within him and he had the peace that Jesus gives. Oh, beloved, today, reach out and accept that peace in your life. Accept that wonderful strength, that magnificent grace that covers all of our sins and sinfulness. Reach out today and take that wonderful, wonderful peace of his. Devour it. And oh, beloved, I tell you, you will know what it is to praise God. You'll know what it is to rejoice. You'll know what it is to give thanks. And you will have a gentleness and a graciousness in turmoil. No one will understand except those who understand the grace, the peace of God. This peace can be yours today. And with that peace, you will be able to praise God and be able to say to God, give the glory. Amen.